Er, what is going on guys? We're back here with uh, another C6 video. I'm getting real tired of this. Uh, the car's been a piece of crap to me. I had a lifter failure, changed the cam, changed everything. Then O2 failed on me, melted it because I wired the extensions completely incorrectly. So that's on me. I mean, so far, most of this car is on me, but whatever. So now, what's going to happen, what we're going to do today is... Uh, the dry sump so I overfilled the dry sump if you're wondering what happens when you overfill the dry sump on one of these I will insert the video so today as you can see from that clunking sound it needs to be fixed so any day now bike bus fire fire I want a bike probably do that shit next we'll see anyway so we need so the clunking sound that you were hearing is basically from the dry sump um, there is you probably can't see it from over here but there is a o-ring in there o-ring type of thing that holds the pickup tube not the pickup the return line tube and it's basically metal metal rubbing so we're going to have to take it apart remove it from either top or bottom I don't really know which way it comes out and then take it and open it up and see what goes on on the inside so those are the plans for today I already drained all the oil most of it there's probably still some in the lines and everything so we'll do that um, first things first obviously take out the tire well the wheel so we'll do that and then I guess we'll go from there to dry some you gotta remove one two three four five pop clips push clips whatever you want to call them um, then these three once you remove them we'll open up this the fender the rear wheel well I don't know what you call it whatever and then this one these two should open up this part which actually lets you access the dry sump and there are some more underneath it um, which I'll get to in just a second but for right now let's do Don't really want to lose these. I don't know if they're replaceable, probably are, but for right now they're very important, so don't lose them. Okay. Just to show you if you remove it like over here, all you gotta do is just pull back on it. And then you can see a dry sump right there. So you can see mine's covered in oil and there's a bolt that I need to remove right there. And uh, there's two more underneath that also I guess hold this in place too. So let's go underneath and remove those two and yeah. All right, so we're underneath the car. Um, you got two more, oh, one more pop clip and then one, two, 10 millimeters. And then one, uh, one two, seven millimeters. So and after that it should come out um, as you clearly tell there's oil everywhere so don't overfill it dry so and if you let your car sit for a while like I did and your battery dies or you let it sit for a while a lot of the oil actually goes back into the oil pan which makes it seem like it's empty because my dipstick was bone dry but it's actually not so keep an eye out on that Learn from my mistakes. Don't do what I do. Oh, nice. Cracked it. I don't know how. Well, maybe it came like that. No matter. some looks like there it is um, I don't know which way to remove it just yet I gotta figure it out but as you can see it's very dirty oh yeah oh, it's one of the brackets all right so I can remove it from there where's the other one is there another one all right, so there's no one right there I have to disconnect these lines 
which means there'll probably be oil coming out. Wow, look at that oil. Wow, I really messed up. Like, I really messed up this time. Jesus. Hopefully that's the last of my problems, because I've been having issues with this since I started rebuilding it. Oh. Alright, anyway, it's good to clean this. Um... Most of this car can be taken apart with a 13 millimeter and a T and a torque socket. I think T45 or T25. Oh, you also might want to take pictures while doing this just so you know where everything goes back. So if not, you're gonna have a bad time. Shouldn't be using, it. should be using open-ended. We'll wait on that to race on drip, which is a good sign. But we'll wait on it because I don't want to damage the O-rings. If there is one in there, I guess we'll remove it from the car with these two bolts and then pry it out a little bit. Should work like that. And that's probably a 15 or 17. One thing I do want to say before you move anything, make sure you unplug everything. So like this little sensor. It looks like it's going to be a bitch. I'll try to unplug it. Um, and then the lines on top that connect to the dry sum. Don't forget to disconnect that. So I'll try to get a screwdriver to remove that real quick. And then I'll continue removing this and wherever the second bolt is. And then hopefully it'll pry out. So be right back. Now that we got that all out the way, there's actually two more bolts missing on top. Uh, you can't really see them too well, 
but it's those two right there. I'm trying to show you the best I can. Um, that's held onto this bracket. Well, the bracket that holds my catch can. So we'll remove that, and then the dry sump ideally should come out. I guess uh, we'll see. more bolt right here this little guy that holds on to the hood latch area um, now comes the hard part which is going to be removing it which I really don't know which way to do it I don't think we'll go out the bottom because this is in the way so if I move it maybe if I move this out no nope. all right let me figure it out and then I'll get back to you guys best way to remove it was from the bottom um, it was a huge pain the ass had to take out basically the whole entire fender but we got it out time to take it apart inspect it clean it put whatever broke off back in there um, as you can see it's really oily I'm also gonna clean over here oh, don't want to lose those so yeah I guess we'll be back in just a few minutes kind of want to Get some water. It's hot, very hot outside. At least we got it out. Hell yeah, gang gang. Alright, so we're gonna clean it up now, seeing how it's oozing with oil everywhere. <sighs> wow, this is really, really bad. Alright then. Anyway, it takes uh, 13 millimeters. 30 millimeter socket. Oof, man, this is really freaking dirty. Alright, that should be good. I'm using some tub of towels to clean them, get them a little bit dry, and then I'm gonna dry it out with uh, some shop towels. A shop towel, because these things are freaking fire. Alright.
filter. There's a little pickup tube or return tube. I don't know. I don't know if there's supposed to be a O-ring down there. Could be that was causing the sound. I don't really know. Could be this. I don't know. I gotta look at the diagram. Go from there. See what I gotta do. So I decided to just send it with some Teflon. Uh, I just hope. I mean, it stopped the rattling, so hopefully it should hold. I don't know. I guess we'll see. The O-ring looked like it was good, so I didn't really need to replace it. I just put Teflon in both the top and the bottom half. And now I'm just going to uh, put it back in. And hopefully that stops my rattling. If not, maybe it's something in the fender. Maybe something else is broken. I don't know. Maybe the engine's destroyed. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Maybe the motor mount. Nah, I doubt it. I guess we'll see. <laughs> straightforward so it doesn't matter I, I put some uh, some Teflon around it hopefully I like I just also found out that the o-ring is supposed to slide up and down that's what prevents it from rattling um, hopefully the Teflon helps at least we know you know if my oil temperature goes through the roof or my pressure drops it could be because of the Teflon I don't know I guess we're just gonna wing it subscribe we'll get some more videos out whenever i get a chance i'll try to be more up to date with it but yeah you already know <laughs>